Hi, Floss Tube. <clears throat> this is Brenda. Uh, my station, my channel is Handwork Maniac. It is Saturday, April 20th. Tomorrow is Easter. We have some beautiful weather yesterday and today. We've had rain for weeks. Snow and rain and snow and rain and beautiful weather finally yesterday and today. So I have been outside doing yard work. We did, we added onto the back of the house last year and it uh, kind of, you know, trashed the yard like it always does. And we knew it would and that's okay. So this year is my year to get the yard back under control. I'm doing it a little bit at a time, but this morning I was working on the front yard and my, I have a wee village I told you about before, a miniature, it's a flower bed that's a little miniature village. Um, and it was in the back, but I knew it was going to be destroyed when they did the new addition. So I took some of the, a lot of it is perennial plants that I have planted in there over the years. So I took them all out, as many as I could, and I moved them to a flower bed that I have in the front. And I kind of made a little uh, wee village in there. Because I realize it's a lot more fun to weed a flower bed when it's a little village. I have a lot of fun with that. So I was working on getting that front flower bed under control. I can't replace my back flower bed wee village yet until they we had some railroad ties holding it up. It was a two level flower bed right up against the house and it was right next to where they did the new addition and the heavy tractors back there caught the edge of those railroad ties and, and they all fell down. So we have to replace that with some rock not bricks, uh, rock squares that we have, that, but we haven't done that yet. So I can't replace that one yet. When we do, I will show you a picture or I'll go out and take a short video because I enjoy my little wee village. And when the front one gets going a little better, I was out there weeding today. I think it's mostly weeded, but it's going to need a lot of work still. I will take a, a video of that as well and show you. Love my wee villages. Let's go. Oh, well, we'll do that later. Let's go to whips. I feel like I'm not quite all here today. <laughs> not quite in the groove yet. Maybe it's because I've been doing yard work all morning. Not in my cross stitching embroidery brain yet. I took off my completely muddy, dirty pants, changed my pants. But I did not change my shirt. I did run a comb through my hair after doing all that yard work. All right, this is the heirloom stocking that I'm doing for my daughter-in-law, Hannah. Last time I showed you, I was working on the back stitching up here. And this time, this week, I was able to get most of the back stitching done in this. Almost done with the back stitching on the pots on that shelf. I just need to do the back stitching on these um, molds, copper molds that are hanging down here and the top of this stove. And then I can move the Q-snaps down. There's a popcorn string right along here. Um, it's cranberries and popcorn and it's French knots. And I don't think I'll do those until at the very end. So I'll wait until I am all done with the stocking because I don't want the Q-snaps to squish those French knots. So that's where that is. Very excited for progress on that, but it should have been halfway by the end of March. And here we are almost at the end of April. This stocking needs to be done by the end of June. So I'll keep working on that. See if I can get it there so I can start the other stocking I need to do in July and have that done by Christmas. For my other daughter-in-law, Lauren. Uh, that is on... Uh, 28 count mushroom Lugana. It's Better Homes and Gardens heirloom stockings. Heirloom Christmas stockings. They were originally in the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine that Better Homes and Gardens published. Then they put it in a book, which has been reprinted twice and gone out of print. But sometimes you can still find this on the internet. And then Cooler Design Studio, K O O L E R sells it on their website and they are also have it um, I noticed on 123 stitch now carries it you can just buy one stocking at a time and that is the call for DMC floss I 
shores of Hawk Run Hollow. Just getting close. This is where I am. Been working on that water all week. So close to being finished with that water. And then there's some letters up here and some fish that apparently have jumped out of the water because they're not in the water. <laughs> but that is close. Really want to finish this by the end of the month before I start Mania. Uh, it's on... Oh, I don't have my other paper. Oh, dear. It's on 40 count. Picture this plus heritage. And it is the called for NPI silks. Except for one, that color of the water, I switched out to Classic Color Works Bahama Breeze, I believe it was. Part of it I used the watercolor that it called for, and part of it I have changed to the water to this other color. Uh, not Classic Color Works, um, Belsois. It's Belsois Silk. So that is close. I'm hoping next time I show it to you, it will be finished. I've had a Hawk Run Hollow piece in my, as a whip, gosh, for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. Kind of trying to do a block every two months or a block every month sometimes. I'm going to kind of miss that because it's kind of in that piece I work on a little bit every day. So that will be strange to not have one going. I do have the Christmas one in my stash, but it's not calling to me right now. And none of the other ones are calling to me. So I think it will be a while before I start another one. That's going to be very strange. Uh, Carriage House Samplings is the designer for that. One strand of silk over two fabric threads. And silk is a little fatter than little thicker than cotton so it has a really nice silk has a really nice coverage when you're doing one over two on 40 count okay this uh, words to live by stitch along mystery monthly stitch along by tiny modernist started on this this came out on the this section came out on the 15th I am should be done with it by now, but I'm not. That section there. Next week when I'm done with it, which is when I plan on being done with it, I'll take it off the key steps and show you the whole thing so far. I have the the other two blocks done over here. I think those were February and March. This middle block that came out in January because I started late is not done yet, but it's almost done. I was hoping to get that also finished before Mania starts in May. This is on, oh, I think it's 32 count black linen, and it's the called for DMC, two strands of floss over two fabric threads. Love that one on the black. Those pretty chalkboard colors are so pretty on there. This is a so much to love, more to love size bag because it fits my 11 by 11 Q snaps. Love those. Hannah's stocking is in an Evertote, a Christmas Evertote. I love those as well. Also fits my 11 by 11 Q snaps. This is Petite House by Soda Stitch. This also has a deadline. It's a stitch along I'm doing with an online group that I belong to, a chat, old chat board. So it needs to be done by, it's June 20 something, 27th, something like that. I can't remember. I know it's a Sunday. And I took this to work this week and actually worked on it during my lunch half hour. I was working up here on these, this window up here. Still loving the colors on this one. Love the bright colors. Love the pattern. I'm loving it on this fabric. I wasn't sure I would, but I do. It's 40 Count Rainbow by Silk Weaver. It had a lot of yellowy green in it, the fabric. When I'm done with it, I'll pull it all out and show you. And I kind of chose a section of the fabric that didn't have as much of that yellowy green in it. 
because I thought that would look better with this piece. Really enjoying that. One strand of floss over two fabric threads and it is the called for DMC floss. So I've been working on that quite a bit, trying to get it a little bit further along before Mania starts, since it needs to be done by the end of June, and it's not going to see a lot of love in May. Uh, one more. I did not get to Victorian Charm this week. And I didn't work on Seize the Day, because that was all caught up since I've showed you that, and it, the next section doesn't come out until the 25th, so there's nothing to show you on that one. And then I finished Adventure Awaits. So I think that's all my whips, except for this one, which is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions. I think this is also 32 count linen, white linen. I've been working on this medium green uh, specialty stitches. When I get to the end here, that will be the end of this specialty band, and then I will start the next band, which will be two-color uh, cross-stitch band, like this one and this one. And it will be half medium green, half light green. And then the next row will be specialty stitch band again, that will be the light green and the light blue. And when I hit that blue, I will be at the corner finally and can start doing shorter rows. This is the one I'm doing with my sister-in-law as an everyday challenge. We do at least 30 minutes every day on, this is the one I'm doing. She's doing, oh gosh, now like three of you had told you the name of this and I was gonna pull it out. Magic Moments, I believe, is the correct name. And it's cute. It's two little kids sitting, standing on a bed, looking out the window at at where Santa Claus just was. You can kind of see the swirl in the sky. It is a really cute piece. This one is going a lot slower than I thought it would at putting 30 minutes in on every day. I just didn't realize that every stripe takes like six hours. So it's beautiful. I know I complain about it a lot, but I do love it. I still think those colors are just gorgeous. Love the Avera Soie silks that I'm stitching it in. It's just been a lot of fun. Oh, I should take the top off so you can see that upper part that's now hidden. So this is what it looks like so far. That will probably continue. I'll probably you know, I said I used to work on shores every, a little bit every day. When I'd sit down to stitch, that was just kind of my mindless first hour was work on shores a little bit. This will probably become my new, because I do better, I burn out really easy on this one. So I do better if I just do a little bit every day. So this is probably going to be continue to be the challenge piece for the rest of, for several more months until it gets finished. I'll probably sit down and do the first 30 minutes to an hour when I sit down to stitch on this piece so it will keep moving along and I don't get burned out on it so easily. But I do enjoy it. And it is also one strand even though it's one strand of silk over two fabric threads even though it's 32 count. It does, you can see the fabric through the stitching a little bit more but the silk is a little bit fatter so it has a little bit better coverage and I think it looks okay. It's pretty. It's beautiful on there. All right, that is all my whips. Uh, haul or mail, I don't have any haul this week, but last week I told you in the second to last video that I got a fob in the mail, a scissor fob from Mistress Jenny on Etsy. And then I said, I'll run up and grab it and then I'll show it to you on the next video I did, which was the mania video. I did go up and grab it and I did bring it down and put it on the table right next to me. Completely forgot to show it to you. So here it is. It has this beautiful tree on it and the beads are green and brown. And that is my monthly fob for April. That's the one I'm using for April. On my favorite scissors that I use every day. I have a million scissors and the ones I use every day are the Dovo scissors. So like I said, I just decided to start changing the fob every month. 
to feel like I was, you know, changing it up, using something for the a seasonal fob. I also got this beautiful card in the mail from Pat. Isn't that pretty? The envelope even matched. Gorgeous. Thank you, Pat. She sent me some floss that I was needing. Thank you so much. That will be fabulous. In fact, that's the piece I need it for is the piece that Catherine took home to work on for my birthday Mother's Day. So I'll make sure she has it. I think I have enough now. I think to finish that piece. That will be awesome. And thank you so much for thinking of me. Um, I did not get any other haul this week. So I think that's all for that section. We will move on to an old, old finish. This is heavy, is what this is. <laughs> this is, since it's Easter tomorrow, I thought I'd show this one. It is O Jerusalem, and it was a Bucilla kit. And I did it on the kit fabric, which is a cream colored Ada. It's a light cream colored Ada. I'm sure it was 18 count. I used the called for the um, threads that came with the kit. I started it in September of 2007 and I finished it on December 30th of 2008. So I'm sure it was one of those I wanted to have it done by the end of the year. I'm shocked it wasn't the 31st. I actually finished it on the 30th. What a shock. But I I didn't enjoy all the... I love the piece. Love this piece. Love it. I admired it forever before I finally stitched it. Um, I did not enjoy all the browns. But um, it made the piece. The browns and the greens. It is gorgeous. And I didn't work on it. I was not a one at a time then. I was working on it in between several other projects. So I'd work on it a little bit and then get sick of it and then work on something else. I really like the surface stitching that's on top after you do all the cross stitching there's several this weed this plant not a weed I'm sure it's a plant is stitched in long straight stitches on top of the cross stitch and there's another one Let's see if I can show you over here I really liked how those looked how they turned out just a beautiful piece the city of Jerusalem over here. The pattern called for there to be white straight stitches on top of all of this, kind of back stitching on top of it, I guess, to show that the, the morning light was, sh was shining on it. But I didn't like the way it looked, so I chose not to do that. I just left it off. It was um, blended threads. There was a lot of back stitch, but it's beautiful and I love it. I've been um, studying scriptures this week about the last week of Christ's life and enjoyed looking at that while I did that. That was a, that always makes me think of him when I look at that piece. And for what I wish I was stitching on, I have three more pieces of Jesus Christ kits in my stash. And it was making me want to stitch on one of them this week. This is a Dimensions Gold Collection, and it's called Precious in His Sight. It's based on a painting by Greg Olson. Old Jerusalem is as well. This one is called Lost No More. It is also a Dimensions Gold Collection kit. Comes, they all come with the 18 count Ada and the floss. This one does as well. And this one is called Light of the World and it is a Bucilla kit. And it also is on more of a tan colored Ada. 18 count Ada, and here's the floss. 
but they need to get started on one of those. My original thought was that I have four children. And so if I do all four of them, cross stitches of Jesus Christ, then when I die, they can just split them up and they can each have one, right? <laughs> but it's been since 2008 since I finished that and I haven't started another one. I want to do this one with the sheep next. Love the colors in that. I should start that. Maybe uh, 2020s mania. I'll start one of these. All right, plans. Um, if you're interested in my mania plans, M-A-Y-N-I-A, -I, I went over this year's what I'm going to start in May in my video number 23. And if I wasn't doing mania um, floss tube videos in 2018, I didn't start until, well, I was, but not until uh, September, October-ish is when I started. So I wasn't doing videos when I did mania. So if you're, I did do a report of in, a couple months ago. It's video number 17. If you're interested in what I stitched in 2018 for Mania, I did a report two months ago, I think it was, and showed you everything that I had finished and everything that was not finished yet. But I showed you all my Mania stuff in that video if you're interested in seeing that. In my last video, not the Mania video, but the one right before that, my whip video, um, no, in the Mania video, I was talking about how you get down to the bottom, you know, you whittle your whips down to whatever relative number that is for you when you feel like it's whittled down to a small pile. And what's left is the stuff you, it's hard or it's been taking, you've worked on it forever and you're just so tired of it. It's just, it just, there's something hard about them. The point I was trying to make that I never did make was that Mania helped me with all these smaller pieces, which is relative, smaller to me, where I was having finishes and had some different things to work on, I also worked on those old whips in between. So it helped me finish those old whips and not have just those old whips left to do. Because I found myself not stitching on it. When I just had those last few that I wasn't really excited about, I'd find other things to do instead of stitch. And I was not enjoying cross stitch anymore. So I realized that the new starts and the smaller mania stuff that I had and some new bigger ones, um, I always work those old ones into my rotation. So they do get some love in between and then they do finally get finished. So that was the point I was trying to make, which I completely went out of my head because I got off on some tangent like you always do, right? All right, and then, oh, last thing. I will be starting one of my Mania pieces early. I'm going to totally cheat. But Mania is whatever, however you want to do it, so it's not cheating, right? This is one of my, will be a new start for me, for Mania. My birthday is at the very end of April. It's on the 28th, which is really close to May. So I decided that I was going to start this on my birthday as, um, as a gift to myself. I'll start it early on my birthday and then it will still be one of my pieces in Mania. It will just technically be a whip instead of a new start by then. Uh, a very generous viewer has been helping me with my French pronunciation because I don't speak French and I have no idea how to pronounce it. But she, if I get it right, I'm probably still going to kill it. But it's Utopi, I believe. Utopi hopefully something close to that. And it is the French version of Utopia, which for me would be living in a tree in all these cute little houses. As long as you got along with everyone else who lived in the tree, right? Love this piece. It is by Camille Colge Camps. Her name is right here. Uh, the Jardin Privé website sells this pattern. Um, I did have some viewers say that they found it on Amazon. And they also found it at ABC Stitch. No, it, yeah, ABC Stitch. So it looks like a couple of people are carrying it now. I ordered mine from my LNS because I knew that they carried Jardin Privé patterns. And they said they just ordered it when they ordered their other Jardin Privé patterns and were able to order it for me. It didn't take them very long. 
Um, I did invite anyone who wants to stitch this piece as well to stitch it with me as a stitch along from it's be my that I'll start on my birthday. And we'll do, I'll just use a hashtag utop, utopi, U T O P I E S A L 2019 will be the hashtag I'll use. Please join me if you'd like to. I will be using the called for DMC floss and I'm doing it on 40 count silk weaver autumn fields. I'll be doing one strand over two fabric threads. And I think that's everything. I hope you have a fabulous uh, weekend. If you celebrate Easter, have a beautiful, wonderful Easter. Otherwise, just enjoy the spring if you're in the northern hemisphere. Enjoy the small, the fall if you're in the southern hemisphere or anywhere in between. Have a great weekend and I hope you get lots of stitching done and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.